Peters and Nanny's shocking reveal. Megan and Harry are bosses from hell. Threats, humiliation, and filthy bathrooms. Tell all about Sussex's crazy demands and overbearing tactics. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Kate Middleton and the Queen Today News Channel. Before Meghan Markle and Harry left their royal duties in early 2020, there were accusations that surfaced claiming that Meghan Markle had bullied staff members at Buckingham Palace. Now, of course, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, as well as their supporters, vehemently denied the allegations. The authors of the Sussex-friendly tell-all book Finding Freedom, they described two former employees who took back their accusations, and then Meghan and Harry went on record calling the claims against them a calculated smear campaign based on misleading and harmful misinformation. And now, in a star exclusive, insiders are letting the cat out of the bag. They are setting the record straight about what it's really like to work for Megan, 40, supposedly, and Harry, age 37. So in the U.S., the two of them are often perceived as being pretty low-key thanks to their barefoot and pregnant photo shoots, as well as that blockbuster March 2021 interview in which they opened up about their lives in the royal family. But insiders are saying something we've all known for a while now. That is all for show. One source is quoted as saying they are the worst people in the world to work for. Uh, this source noted that Meghan's micromanaging ways can only be rivaled by spoiled Harry's disgusting habits inside of their nine-bedroom, $14.7 million Montecito, California MIG mansion. The former staffer of the parents of Archie and Lilibet adds, You couldn't pay me a million dollars to go back and work for them. I'd rather not have a job than be at their beck and call. So according to what that source has said, uh, prospective nannies and household employees have to jump through some major hoops just to get hired. The source dishes Harry and Meghan pay tens of thousands of dollars to hire special FBI-type agency to do background checks on potential hires. And apparently, they're not just looking for criminal records or verifying referrals. The source adds they want to know everything. Details about your family, even grandparents, personal relationships, what kind of town you come from, your spending habits. If you have too many credit cards, you won't get the job. So with these ridiculous standards, the source adds that only 1% of applicants pass Harry and Meghan's screening process. The source is quoted as saying, it's ridiculous. And according to this insider, from there, things don't get any better. The insider goes on to say, once you get offered a job, Harry and Meghan give you a detailed contract full of fine print. The source explains it's so complicated that even a top attorney would be confused. So apparently the contract is chock full of very specific demands. That includes a ban on small talk as well as eye contact with the master and mistress of the house. Uh, the source says you can't speak to them unless they speak to you first. Apparently, cell phones and laptops are not even allowed inside of the residence, and all bags must be searched before the employees can pass the gate. And that's not all. The source claims that female staffers are even told what they're allowed to wear. The source says flat shoes and pants must be worn at all times. And the staff joke that it's because Megan doesn't want Harry looking at another woman's bare legs. Uh, this source notes, if you break the contract, you're out. Now, she may not have been raised anywhere near the royal palaces that her husband was, but she has a reputation for being quite the micromanager, someone who watches her employees like a hawk and complains about every single little thing. The source says some people call her the wicked witch of the West Coast behind her back. And that source added that the staff was aware the former suit star had cameras installed throughout the house. Quote, you feel like Megan is constantly breathing down your neck, even when she isn't in the room. And apparently, no mistake is too small to be worthy of attention from this supposed women's rights advocate. The source reveals that if you forget to put the top back on a pen, you get told off. And the source added that one assistant was even fired on the spot because there was a typo in Harry's to-do list. Quote, she left in tears. Apparently, Megan is quite the neat freak. She wants things in perfect order at all times, and it's said that she threatens termination if something isn't done to her liking. 
The source says the cups in the kitchen cupboards have to be aligned to be a certain distance from one another, and everything is color-coordinated. If anything is left out of place, she snaps at you. And no big surprise here, but she does play mind games as well. The source says she expects her staff to be well-read and test their intelligence in front of colleagues. Apparently, she'll ask her employees tricky questions just to mess with them, quote, and then make them feel so humiliated when they don't know the answer. And apparently, their master Harry is no better. The source says he is the biggest slob. The bathroom is the worst. He doesn't flush the toilet and there's toothpaste all over the sink. Worst of all, he leaves his dirty underwear on the floor for the help to deal with, according to this source. Maids wear rubber gloves because they don't want to touch anything in there. And apparently, he is also known for leaving dirty dishes and half-eaten sandwiches all around the house. So I guess being up close and personal with these royals, or well, former royals, is no fairy tale. The source concludes, so many people quit because of their bosses, not the job. Put it this way, getting a job with Harry and Meghan simply isn't worth the hassle. Wow. You know, honestly, though, none of this surprises me. Just looking at Harry, I think we can all tell he's a bit of a slob. And Meghan, yeah, she just screams control freak. Still, though, I was a little surprised to read about how nasty Harry is behind closed doors. I mean, I guess his entire life he's just had people picking up after him. But still, you would think he would learn a little bit about just how to take care of himself. It's very basic. Now back to another issue. Some people are asking, why are so many people upset about Harry and Meghan telling about the racism that exists within the royal family? Well, first of all, I am not convinced that that statement has anything to do with reality. I think as usual, Meghan Markle was using her sneaky, vague words to imply that somebody had concerns about the unborn Archie's skin color. Concerns, really, though? Or were they just wondering about what skin tone the product of this mixed-race mother and white father may be? I mean, there are lots of possibilities. I don't think there's anything racist about it. To say there were concerns really implies that someone was afraid that she would give birth to a dark baby. Is that true? I highly doubt it. I think the royal family isn't like that. And even Meghan didn't dare say outright that someone viewed a darker-skinned baby negatively. No, as always, she just relies on the power of suggestion. That way she thinks she's covering herself. She can just bat those eyelashes if someone challenges her about that statement later. She can say, no, that was never what I meant. It must be you that misunderstood. I didn't say that. Such manipulation. See, after that interview, people started thinking she was some kind of black rights champion. And they were actually commending her for standing up to the royal family when it comes to race. But a lot of us see right through her little game. What racism is she even talking about? For most of her life, Megan has considered herself to be white. And when it comes to what she looks like, I think she looks more Latina or South American than she does black. At most, I think she's about 40% black. And the queen, the queen was so welcoming to her when she first arrived in the UK. The fact of the matter is the royal family showed her nothing but kindness. They were so welcoming to her. I mean, sure, there may have been some ugly moments surrounding a brooch, but racism, hardly. Megan is the one who brought this up, that she was haunted by the racism lurking in the family. In fact, the royal family has shown a lot of love towards Middle Eastern people. Now, the royal family does have German origin, so is it true that in the past, maybe there was some anti-Semitism? Okay, yes, probably. But I really think that's a thing of the past. And imperialism, that's been part of the empire for a very long time. But times have changed, and undoubtedly, so have the mindsets of people in the royal family. We cannot use our modern perspectives to judge what happened in past centuries, and that's a fact. Nowadays, though, it is very trendy to condemn anyone and everyone who's ever said a bad word about people of color. In fact, Megan did not suffer because of her blackness. I mean, if I didn't know her personality, I would even say she's a pretty attractive woman. So any bad feelings surrounding Megan are completely due to her behavior, her self-promotion, and her greed. What it all boils down to is that Megan is just not a very pleasant person to have to deal with.
and you, what do you think about her? Please let me know what you think below in the comments section and we'll also talk about them. Remember to like and share my video with your friends and relatives who would enjoy it if you think our video is useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the Kate Middleton and the Queen Today news channel to get more videos from our team in the future. Now thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next videos.